We've had several requests for small body beginner guitars because for lots of people, the big dreadnoughts just are too big. Well, it turns out there's two great options we're gonna tell you about today, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Teespring store for our customized t-shirts. Are you Cooper Greenberg? I'm Cooper Greenberg. You, and you're so excited about it, too. I'm Cooper. <laughs> I'm Cooper. No, so Cooper, we've got two great small body beginner guitars. This is a request that I've seen on some of our uh, videos that we've done, kind of highlighting some great beginner options from both of these manufacturers, in fact, and others. Um, and, and a lot of people are saying, that's great, but yeah. those are too big. How come nobody makes a smaller body beginner guitar? And it turns out they do. They do, yeah. So FG800, FA125, FA115, CD60S. Yeah, they're, they're all, all big huge. bodies. Yeah, yeah, they're all big guys. Uh, but these are kind of smaller, more grand concert or concert size. You know, yeah, options. pretty much. Uh, so this is an FS800. The uh, nomenclature of the body from Yamaha is folk. But yeah, I think we could call it like a triple O or concert sized body. Yeah. Um, and that's specifically what Fender calls that. So that is the we CC. C -C CC60S. Say that five times fast. CC60S. So the CC60S, uh, like CNC Music Factory? Oh, yeah. Everybody. The play finish now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody played. Uh, 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 uh. So uh, it rough. comes in a variety of finishes. I really like the black finish that we have here. Years ago, when these packs were originally came out, yeah. I think it was the DG8S, which again was a big body, and you could not keep the black finish in stock. Super popular. Yeah. It's just a good looking guitar. I think that we have some of the black CD60s out on the sales floor mm -hmm. right now. Very cool guitars because it kind of throws back to kind of a Johnny Cash kind of vibe, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it's just a sharp looking finish. I think they do a natural and a sunburst as well. They do. And don't they do a sunburst on the FS? They do, and occasionally, I don't know if we have any in stock right now, but uh, they'll also do a, a tinted top one that's mm -hmm. usually unique yeah. to stores like ours, uh, Indies. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, they're both, so CC is a concert. They're both yeah. concert sized guitars, you can see here. And they're basically smaller body guitars uh, for the more petite among us. Neither of us are dunking uh, playing basketball anytime soon. Um, and so I tend to prefer a small body guitar and there's a lot of benefits to that uh, that we'll talk about. But these are incredible values right off the bat. So we're talking about beginner guitars. Usually someone's looking for a guitar that's not too expensive. So tell us how much each of these go for. So there's a couple differences that cause this, but the FS800 currently goes for 219. Um, the CC60S pack goes for 239. And obviously prices always change. They're probably gonna change. Oh, here they will right definitely after, change. Yeah, right after as soon Christmas. as we're done talking, they'll probably yeah, they'll change. probably go up. So. The difference is, this is about $20 more, but you do get some swag with it, as seen in the box behind us. Now, so tell me, that wouldn't look great to come down and see on Christmas morning. That's fantastic. Like, you don't even need to wrap it, just put a bow. Yeah, we've done a lot with certain packs, um, and you know, all the Fender packs are very high quality and nicely, you know, kind of, the packs are nicely packed, you know, but it's a cool thing to open up. We're not going to do the unboxing here because... That was a little redundant for an English major. The packs are beautifully <laughs> assembled. There you go. Um, so, the CC60S pack, like the FA115 yeah. that we've talked about, uh, the CD60S pack, all that stuff, it comes with kind of the same... Uh, now you're making me rethink all of <laughs> I'm trying to think of all these synonyms. The same accoutrement. Same accoutrement. Uh, so you get a nice big bag in there. Yeah. yeah, you get a strap, you get some picks. You get some strings and you get access to Fender Play for three months. So you're paying $20 extra for this, but again, like we always say, if you're pricing all that stuff out individually, it's yeah, gonna it's be- a huge value. Know, it's a really nice value. Um, but the difference is with 
you know, the FS800 and the FG800, there's just something really nice about those guitars too. It's like, it's a great value just having the guitar itself. Yeah, if you have been subscribing to our channel for a period of time, you'll know that we're huge fans of the Yamaha guitars. I have specifically done a number of videos over the years on this line. And where it happened was a few years back when they switched from the 700 series to the 800 series, they made a very specific choice and that was doing scalloped bracing on the top. Now at the time, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Guitars in this price range were not scalloped brace. What's fantastic about uh, competition is that uh, it, there's a one-upsmanship about it. So now yeah. that one also has scalloped bracing mm -hmm. as well. And what that means, if you don't know, is that under the top, under this spruce top on either of these guitars, there are spruce braces. And they're designed to help withstand the tension of the strings, but the way that they're oriented helps to determine what the guitar sounds like. It determines how much the top's allowed to move, and by scalloping the bracing, they're actually removing material, creating these peaks and valleys in the shape of the, uh, of the brace that allows the brace to be structurally rigid and yet move in the places that the designer wants it to move. And that all helps determine what the guitar sounds like. So generally speaking, a guitar that has scalloped X bracing is gonna have a more open, full sound. And the minute they started doing that with these guitars, they just came up to another level. They were punching way above their price class. Um, and you already had the Yamaha quality with now a much fuller sound than you could typically get at this price range. Now, like I said, other builders have followed suit. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot more between these guitars that is similar than there used to be. But there's still unique differences. So we're still big fans of Yamaha. They make a fantastic guitar. These guitars are about the same size. Mm -hmm. They both are spruce. They both have laminate construction or layered back and side wood construction. Now what that means is that the top is solid spruce. Mm -hmm. And I've said on record, and I will say this again, if you're buying a beginner guitar, try to buy something that is at least solid top. That means the top's gonna move more, it means over time it's going to sound better, mm -hmm. it's gonna kind of open up as it ages, um, and that's just a better instrument. And usually, now, not that much more money. Yeah, We're just, just north of 200 bucks on either of these guitars mm -hmm. to get solid top with scallop bracing. So that's a big part of it. Um, that's similar between both of these. But the thing that's different is how they feel. And that's something we've talked about with the big body versions as well. This has a satin finished neck. Yep. We both prefer it yes. as far as the feel of this neck. You like that on the mic? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry. DJ Chris over here, dude. Sorry. So, uh, so yeah, you get a satin finish on the neck, and it feels nice in the palm of your hand. That one's gloss. Yeah, you got a gloss finish on here. It's it, not bad. It's, it's not bad. We different. both prefer the yeah. satin. Um, but I mean, I've got guitars with gloss necks and that I don't that I play all the time and, and yeah. wouldn't change. So um, the other thing is the feel of the 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 strings, the kind of the tension that's on them, the thickness of the neck. I think Fender made a very smart move with this line of guitars. This is their classic design. When they narrowed the nut, they shortened the scale length just a little bit, and they worked on the carve of the neck to make it extremely comfortable for someone that's new to playing. Yeah, a narrower nut is going to be easier for a beginner to kind of fit your hand around the neck. Right. And then that shorter scale makes things a little slinkier, a little easier going. Um, Frets are a little closer together, yeah. so when you're doing certain chords and you're trying to stretch, they're just a little bit closer. Yeah. When you're doing a bar chord like, or a, a cowboy chord in first position like G, you're starting out, you probably don't notice but as yeah. you progress, you'll notice the scale length differences. Yeah. I think it's interesting to think of that and, you know, look at these two guitars from the point of view of somebody that's never played a guitar and then somebody who has been playing for a while and maybe needs, um, you know, something of this price range for traveling or, you know, not worrying too much about, uh, you know, keeping out on a stand or something like that. I would say the experienced guitar player might gravitate towards that one mm -hmm. more often and the beginning guitar player might gravitate towards this one. But then there's also the question of if these little subtle nuances between them make too much of a difference in the eyes of somebody that's 
might just like the look of one a little bit mm -hmm. better or the sound of one a little bit better. Yeah, so. so you want black finish and this one doesn't come in it. That can usually be the deciding factor because we typically shop with our eyes first. Yeah. But these are musical instruments and despite the fact that they are the same body shape with a basically the same construction, similar design to the bracing, they both sound different because it's based upon the designs of the two particular companies. Yeah. So Cooper's going to demo them for us and I want you to pay close attention to the unique nuanced sound of the tone of each of these guitars. So put on your ears and check it out. So there you have it. Cooper, you've played both of these. Feel-wise, before we talk about sound, which do you personally prefer? Um, I, I like the FS800, FS and this one feels great as well. Um, they're both really comfortable, and both of them had nice frets. Yeah. You know, the, the finish is nice on them both. The small things that are making me gravitate towards this one is the satin neck. Um, and then, you know, we can talk about sound and everything in a second. I really like the satin neck just because I find, you know, everybody's a little different. I'm, it's not like my hands sweat profusely, but they do a little bit. And sometimes on gloss, you get kind of tripped up. It's a little, it's a little sticky. A little sticky. Or if your hands are really dry, it's like, to, you know, there's just a little more um, to think about, I, you know. Somebody drop Cooper a lotion recommendation. Get some lotion, because I'm using the CeraVe, but you know, sometimes <laughs> it's still getting cold outside, I'm still getting dry. Um, on the satin neck, I just think it's a, l a little... It's um, kind of a faster feel. Faster yeah. feel, and it caters to different types of hands. Um, but sound-wise, I do think that they both sound really nice, and I think that has to do with what you're talking about with the solid top, scallop mm -hmm. bracing. Um, but I think that one edges this one a little bit for me. Again, uh, I, I will say that between a CD60 and a CC60, I do prefer the CC60. The smaller body? Yeah, um, so I think it's interesting. There's We could put like a grid together of all the different starter packs, and we probably should at some point on our website. And I can you know vote within brands and then across brands and stuff. 
I think this one is an, uh, just a little bit cooler to me than the Dreadnought. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I'd probably pick that one over an FG800 too. And your personal guitar is a small body guitar. Yeah. Everyone should know that. Most of mine are as well. I have some larger ones, but most of mine are smaller bodies because I prefer that. Um, so we'll talk about just generally how smaller bodies respond. There's less top and you, st you still have the same tension on the strings. And so what happens is that the top vibrates faster, effectively. And what that means is that you don't have to lay into it as much. You don't have to hit it with a hard strum. You can pick softly, you can pick with less energy, and you get more volume comparatively out of it than you would on the large guitar. So that's a benefit in addition to it just being more comfortable. If you're more comfortable with a smaller guitar, you're going to play better. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. I agree with you on the tone between these two. Not necessarily that I prefer one over the other, but what I find with the Yamahas is that they tend to have kind of a more guttural tone. Uh, you could compare it to like Taylor and Martin. Yeah. This one maybe has a bit more of that Martin sound. It still has a lot of articulation and brightness, but it has a little bit more bass, a little bit more richness that's yeah. going on with it. That one is more articulate than this guitar. And what that means is that there's a brightness to each of the notes yeah. that's played. It's what I would typically call a more modern sound on an yeah. acoustic guitar. And so your ears will probably l prefer one over the other. There's not a right answer. It's really what your ear likes. It might like the brilliance of the Fender over the Yamaha. To some ears, the Yamaha might sound thuddy, lo-fi. Yeah. Other people might hear that and go, that's what I want. Yeah. You know, because it also comes down to what you're playing. In either case, I think we can safely say that they're both huge values. Yeah. The Fender may slightly be a better value just in that for 20 bucks more, all of the accessories that you're getting for someone who's starting out is a great deal because you need all of those accessories anyway. Yeah. About the only thing it doesn't come with that you need is a stand. Yeah, for sure. And if you are watching this video looking for maybe a gift for a loved one or for yourself and you're trying to get into guitar, somebody in your family or a friend of yours trying to get into guitar, both are really good options. And if you do prefer the Yamaha, we do have the accessories to be able to put something together for you. We can somewhat build a bundle or build a pack in the store or over the phone online. And we have um, bundles that we've made. So manufacturers yeah. offer bundles, but if you go to our website and you search under guitars, you will see a category that we have specifically for guitar bundles. That will include packs like the one from Fender and also ones that we have custom built with accessories that you otherwise cannot find. And some of those are very affordable and there's more expensive options which would make for very cool options that are available, so. Yeah, totally. Um, I think that, you know, we, we always kind of near the end of the year put together like the holiday gift guide kind of things. It's nice to be able to find, uh, and I'm sure Chris was just about to say this, but feel free to give us a call or email us because, you know, everybody's different. If you tell us what kind of music this person likes or that you like, it's really easy to kind of make a recommendation and everything. But these, I would say, for a beginner is a nice option over a large, you know, dreadnought, which a lot of starter packs just kind of yeah. are a little too big. You know? Well, it's 2021, so I wasn't going to say that. What I was going to say is you can call us, email us, come in. Or you can just chat with us online. If you go to alamomusic.com, you can chat with one of our associates live. And so in the busy hustle and bustle of all of our lives, particularly this time of the year, if you don't have the time to email or call, you can just chat and we can sort everything out for you, make it really easy and get you what you need. Because I always say at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one that you don't have to really think about buying and you just end up playing it. That's it. That's where it's at. So yeah. uh, if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like the videos, drop a comment below. Tell us what you think about these guitars, which one would be your pick, and keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time.